and I welcome you to the session 25 of video mapping series targeting various examinations especially UPSC civil services and the state services examination and as you can see the topic of today's mapping is a part of Indian mapping portion that is the Himalayan mountain chain and today we are going to see in brief the formation of Himalayan mountains along with it we are going to see the ranges inside this Himalayan mountain chain. In the subsequent videos we are going to cover the western Himalayas in detail and the eastern Himalayas in detail. In short let me tell you this video session is going to deal with the introduction part of Himalayas and the factual portion regarding various mountain ranges. And friends if you are following this video series you will emerge as a topper in solving MCQs based upon India and world mapping. So let us start today's session. We are going to first see the location and the spread of Himalayas in various countries. Himalayas as you can see is found in the Asian continent and to the northern portion of Indian subcontinent. In fact India is referred to as the subcontinent only because of the fact that it is separated from the rest of the Asia by the Himalayan mountain chain. In fact Himalayan mountain chain forms a formidable barrier to the cold waves to the cold wind coming from Asia portion and this is why India's climate is contrastingly different to that of the rest of Asia. As far as the countries in which the Himalayan mountain chain is present you can see the most important country is our country that is India and to the north of the Himalayas is China. Apart from this a portion of Himalayas also lies in Pakistan and two smaller countries are sandwiched inside the Himalayan mountain chain that is Bhutan and Nepal. All in all five countries have the physiographic presence of Himalayas and you can see the width of Himalayas is huge. In fact it covers a substantial portion of the western Indian states and the northeastern states along with that it covers almost 80% of Nepal and Bhutan. Both of these countries are in fact mountainous countries and to the north of Himalayas you can see there is a famous plateau plateau of Tibet while to the south of Himalayas is present the most fertile largest plains of the world the Indo Ganga plains that is the plains formed by Indus river in the west Ganga river in the middle and Brahmaputra river in the east. This fertile plain is the largest extent found in the world and houses one of the largest populations of the world. And as far as the plateau of Tibet is concerned it is a intermountain plateau. Intermountain refers to a plateau sandwiched between two mountain systems. So in the south there is the Himalayan mountain system while in the north there is the Kunlun Shan mountain system present in China. And in between these two mountains is sandwiched the plateau of Tibet also known as the Pamir plateau. It is also referred to as the roof of the world just because of the fact that it lies approximately 5000 meters above sea level. At one point of time when Tibet was independent its capital Lhasa was the highest capital of the world because of being situated in this Pamir plateau. But after China annexed Tibet at present the capital of Bolivia that is La Paz. Bolivia is a Latin American country. So its uh, capital La Paz is considered the highest capital located altitude wise in the whole of the world. So Pamir plateau plateau of Tibet the roof of the world and it has a substantial role in even the monsoon arrival in the Indian subcontinent. So that was all about the extent and the number of countries in which Himalayas is found. Let me repeat it there are five countries in which Himalayas are found of which two countries Nepal and Bhutan are completely present inside the Himalayas. Besides this fact there is a very crucial plateau the plateau of Tibet or the Pamir plateau located to the north of Himalayas known as a intermountain plateau known as the roof of the world. The average height of this plateau is 5000 meters above sea level. 
नेक्स्ट लेट शिफ्ट टू द प्रेजेंस ऑफ हिमालयाज इन इंडियन स्टेट्स एज फार एज इंडियन स्टेट्स आर कंसर्न यू कैन सी द हिमालय कैन बी सब डिवाइडेड इन टू द वेस्टर्न हिमालयन पोर्शन एंड द ईस्टर्न हिमालयन पोर्शन इन द वेस्टर्न हिमालयन पोर्शन देर आर टू स्टेट्स एंड टू यूनियन टेरेटरीज वेयर हिमालयाज आर फाउंड द फर्स्ट यूटी इज जम्मू एंड कश्मीर द सेकेंड यूटी इज लद्दाख these two union territories were recently formed in august 2019 after the bifurcation of the j and k state after article 370 giving a special status to j and k was revoked so these are the most recent uts of which ladakh is the largest ut of india south of these two union territories is himachal pradesh and uttarakhand in order these two states are also present in the himalayan belt so in the western himalayan belt two states plus two union territories while in the east you can see the whole of sikkim lies in the himalayan belt along with that arunachal pradesh along with it the nagaland state the manipur state the mizoram state the state of tripura and the state of meghalaya all this lie in the himalayan belt while some portions of west bengal the darjeeling portion and some portions of assam the assam hills portion also lie in the himalayan belt so all in all in the eastern half you can see the first one is sikkim the second one is arunachal pradesh the third is nagaland the fourth is manipur the fifth is mizoram the sixth is tripura the seventh is meghalaya and some portions of west bengal and some portions of assam nine states all in all so that was about the extent of himalayas and these all these states have a separate ecosystem a very distinct ecosystem which is quite separate from the remaining parts of the country and this is why these states are demanding a separate ministry for the himalayan states separate ministry which could look into the demands of these states and which could formulate separate plans and policies for the sustainable development of these states so that was regarding the extent of himalayas in the indian states let us shift to the formation of himalayas as to how the tallest mountain chain of the world was formed let me tell you the himalayas are the fold mountains fold mountain means they are not a single mountain system they in fact consist of parallel or converging mountain ranges so the width of himalayas is huge as you can see parallel or converging mountain ranges in this diagram also you can see there are parallel mountain ranges out here this is the tibet plateau regarding the explanation of the tallest mountain chain of the world the most recent theory which successfully explains the formation of himalayas is the plate tectonics theory and the plate tectonics theory proposes that the earth's lithosphere the upper part of the earth which is 100 kilometers thick is not continuous it is broken down into various subdivisions called as plates and this the lithospheric plates are floating upon the underlying asthenosphere which is in the plastic state asthenosphere is a plastic state material on which lithospheric plates are floating and uh, the plates are floating independent of each other and the whole of the earth lithosphere is in fact subdivided into various plates and these plates floating either move towards each other forming a convergent boundary with each other or move away from each other forming a divergent boundary with each other or move parallel to each other so for the formation of himalayas it is proposed that there was a indian plate the indian landmass and there was a eurasian plate in between these two plates was present a famous water body called as tethys sea which had huge marine sediments and the indian plate approximately 70 million years ago started moving on the asthenosphere towards the northern side that is towards the eurasian plate and this diagram gives the approximate timelines of the location of indian plate you can see 55 million years ago it was in approximately the northern part of the indian ocean 
and 38 million years ago it had converged near the Eurasian plate and approximately 10 million years back it started colliding with the Eurasian plate and when the collision started the marine sediments of the Tethys Sea started getting crushed and the crushing of the sediments gave rise to the folds of the Himalayan mountains. This crushing of the sediments took place in three phases and this is why even the Himalayan mountain chain has three parallel ranges signifying three phase of crushing of marine sediments of the Tethys Sea. This is the explanation given as per the plate tectonics theory. The same explanation is also shown in this diagram, the Indian Australian plate, the Eurasian plate. Amongst these two plates, the Indian plate was denser, having denser crust and this is why it went beneath the Eurasian plate. The Tethys Sea sediments got crushed and got raised up as Himalayan mountain chain. So this was all about the formation of Himalayas. Let me tell you again the timeline. 70 million years ago, the movement of the Indian plate started towards Eurasian plate and it finished approximately 10 million years ago. But still, the Indian plate is colliding with the Eurasian plate. This process is still dynamic going on and this is why approximately 10 centimeters every year, the mountains of Himalayas are getting elevated. So that was all about the formation of Himalayas. Let's shift to the parallel ranges present inside the Himalayas signifying the three phases of uplift or the three phases of crushing of marine sediments of Tethys Sea. So as you can see there are three ranges out here. The first range is the Shivalik ranges, the southernmost range overlooking the in Indo Ganga Brahmaputra plains. Just towards the north of Shivaliks is present the Lesser Himalayas or the Himanchal mountain range. And towards the north of Lesser Himalayas is present the Himadri or the Greater Himalayas mountain chain. In short, three parallel ranges, the height goes on increasing as we go from south to north. Shivalik ranges are having the lowest altitude while Himanchal are having the medium altitude and Himadri are having the loftiest peaks of the world. North of Himadri mountains, there is a trans Himalayan proportion. We are also going to see this trans Himalayas. A very important mount mountain range of this portion is the Karakoram mountain ranges present in Jammu and Kashmir. The same mountain ranges are being shown out here as well. This is the Shivalik, this is the lesser Himalayas, this is the Himadri or the greater Himalayas having the highest peak of the world that is Mount Everest. And towards the eastern portion just where river Brahmaputra or river Dihang enters India, the Himalayan mountain take a southerly bent and form a continuous chain on the eastern part of India. This is also known as the Purvanchal mountain ranges because they are found in the eastern half. Some portion of Purvanchal has also come in Meghalaya portion. So that was all about the ranges present inside the Himalayan mountain chain. We will deal in detail with all these mountain ranges. Let us have a look over the elevation inside the Himalayas. As I told the least elevated or the least altitude or the least height is of Shivalik ranges which are the southernmost ranges of the Himalayas. While north of these Shivaliks is present the Himanchal or the lesser Himalayas present in Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh and J and K and these are having a height elevation above Shivaliks. While the most lofty peaks, the highest peaks of the world are found in the Himadri or the greater Himalayas mountain range. This mountain fold, the Himadri, it has the average height of 6100 meters above sea level. While the Himanchal or the Lesser Himalayas has average height of 3500 to 4500 meters above sea level. While Shivaliks has an average height of 600 to 1500 meters above sea level. Just north of Himadri is present the Trans Himalayas having the Karakoram ranges and here also the average height lies above 5000 meters above sea level. So as we go towards the northern side, from the Indo-Ganga plains, the height increases. 
The loftiest peaks of the world are present in the Himadri mountain chain. As you can see it here, the Mount Everest, the Kanchanjunga, the Dhaulagiri, the Annapurna, the Nanda Devi and the Nanga Parvat and the Namcha Barwa. All these mountain peaks are one of the highest mountain peaks of the world with the highest one being Mount Everest in Himadri and the third highest being Mount Kanchanjunga near Sikkim, Nepal border. While the Karakonam ranges have the second highest mountain peak of the world that is Mount K2 or Godwin Austin. So a question can, might come from here. The second highest mountain peak of the world is present in which mountain chain? It's Karakonam ranges, the Trans Himalayas. While the highest mountain peak of the world is in Himadri, that is the Mount Everest. So that was all about the elevation.